I'm Jesus Hernandez. In this edition of Arizona Barrio Stories, we share the journey of two Chicanos who have traveled different paths in life. Both have helped promote and advance the quality of life in our barrios. My name is Danny Ortega, and I work for the Ortega Law Firm. I've been a lawyer in this town for over 40 years. I practice primarily in the area of personal injury. You know, you've heard the commercials over to me by the lawyers who tell you that they do auto accident work. Well, I do a lot of work involving auto accidents, as well as medical malpractice. If you feel that a doctor, a hospital, or a medical provider has somehow not giving you the proper medical treatment and that has injured you or if you lost a loved one as a result of a malpractice we do that work too we also do cases like dog bites slip and falls things of that nature where you've been injured because of the negligence of another that is the kind of work that we do this is Arizona Barrio Stories. I'm Jesus Hernandez. We're at the Arizona Latino Arts and Culture Center. Our guest today is Alfredo Gutierrez. Alfredo, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Alfredo, let's, let's begin by uh, backtracking some of your stories. You wrote a book called uh, The Sins Against Hope. Indeed. And in it, you mentioned that your legacy as a Chicano activist were based on your family's experiences. Tell That's me a little right. bit about that, about that and your father. Well, we were, we were, I don't think our, our story is, 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 is unique. Uh, family was deported uh, in Your the, my, well, the, the entire family, my father's entire family, uh, before I was born, we, we deported to Mexico. My father had been a miner in, in uh, Miami, Arizona. During World War II, there was a shortage of miners because the men had gone to the war. Women weren't allowed underground and in some of the more dangerous areas. So the mining company sent people into Mexico to recruit the people they deported mm. because they could come back to the country. They knew the work. They could go underground. Uh, most of them uh, were bilingual. We could speak English. And so that's how the family came back. Uh, in uh, in uh, forty two. Then you were born, and I, and that's right. Then then I was born. I I joked that I was the first anchor baby. I I <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I arrived I arrived ready to go. Um, uh, but but entonces uh, we went back and forth. We went back and forth. Uh, How long were you in Miami? Uh, well, my my uh, the entire, the entire family the, was there. The entire family stayed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, until I left for the army, the only inter, uh, uh, interruptions were the, the two times that uh, that my mother left and went back to to Mexico to Sinaloa, uh, and we were there a few months and then came back uh, on two occasions. Uh, but that that was the only interruption. Otherwise, I was there till uh, till I went to the army. Went to the army. Went to Vietnam. Came back. That's right. That's right. I, I was. Uh, 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 I, I was, I, 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 the statistic was, was overwhelming, the number of young Latino men who volunteered, because we believed. I did too, so I understand uh, volunteered, that. And uh, I, was, I was one of those people who, I, I had tough choices, but that was one of them, and I, and I, and I went. So when you came back, um, what was your, your thinking? Uh, was the the book in progress that you were beginning to uh, come up with the ideas for that book of no, no, Sins no. Against Hope? Because that title no, you know, is when fascinating. I, when I came back, the, 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 the reality was that my experience in, in, in uh, the Army, and I remember this was the time of the draft. I was there in the 60s, the time of the draft, and I served with people who had graduated from prestigious universities. I was in basic training, I was in advanced infantry with folks who had gone to, to, to Penn State and to Harvard and to Arizona State. And one, one of the things I realized during that experience, remember I, was, I, I went, I, I signed up at 17. Uh, you could do that then. 
uh, I was 17 years old, so I was in training 17 years old, and I'm with these guys who graduated from universities or have gone to university. One of the things I, I realized is some of them were dumber than rocks. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I can't imagine serving in combat with these guys. They, uh, uh, they hated being there, they, they whined all the time, and they weren't very smart. That experience left me with, clearly with the idea that I was something that, that had never occurred to me before. Teachers never gave me that encouragement. In my family, there was no one, in, no one had ever gone to the university. But that, that experience gave me one thing when I got back, and that is I was smart enough. If those dummies could get through it, I could as well. So, so between that experience and the GI Bill, I was, I was able to, to, to get to the university. There was an incident in Miami, a, a, a murder that really propelled me to leave the town, to say, look, this is enough already. I'm going to, uh, I don't want to end up here. I, so I'm going to the, uh, uh, to the state. Yep. Phoenix. So let's move forward. Once you got to Phoenix, there was a group of you guys that came together um, uh, to create an organization. Well, it was very, it was, it was pretty quickly. But, uh, what this is one of the amazing things. I was in places like Seoul, Korea, and, and in Saigon, and I was hearing about a guy named Cesar Chavez. Now, remember, that this was the days before internet. Nobody had fancy phones they carried around, etc. So, how in the heck, you know, a bunch of Mexicans could hang around at, at PX drinking beer and talk about some guy named Cesar Chavez? It, it's still a phenomena and amazing to me, but we were hearing about it. When I got back, uh, when I get back, I want to meet this guy. I mean, I, I, mean I, I want to know who he is. And the guy showed up in Tolleson one day. He was going to go to Tolleson, and we heard about this. And a bunch of us went out to see, you know, Caesar. Uh, we were very disappointed. <clears throat> I think we expected Martin Luther King. And Caesar was exactly the opposite. He was a very humble, very quiet, very low-key guy. But nonetheless, we were very moved by that, and I think that that was the impetus for much of the organizing that then took place. Uh, a, a much of the structures we built, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the demands for better education in the, in, in, for Latinos in, in high schools, our involvement in elementary schools, and ultimately, uh, our movement into politics uh, uh, came from that uh, uh, so that what, beginning. So, what do you think that organization did for the community once you guys were managed to create the organization? Uh, what, what do you think it did? Well, you, listen, 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 there was <clears throat> when we created, for example, Chicanos for the Casa. It was to organize the poor. It was to organize Mexicans to demand their rights. Over time it evolved, and, and uh, under the, uh, really as great leadership of Pete Garcia, it took a whole different direction. Pete wanted to create, and did, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, social service agency, um, uh, a, a nonprofit in the country, and it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, and that was his vision, but it had nothing to do with our vision. Right which was to organize poor folks. But, you know, that vision hasn't gone away. You know, you have Puente, you, you have uh, Viri Hernandez on the, on the, west, on the west side. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Lucha. Uh, so the, the phenomena of people organizing to force change continues to this day. Uh, so you think the organizations now in the valley are strong enough that are forcing change? Absolutely. You think so? Well, think about it. We, we the, the last major battle in this city, for example, had to do with the police. There is no police accountability, and it was it was it was people like Vidi Hernandez and and and, and uh, Alejandra Gomez. Uh, uh, Puente, the organizations that forced those changes that got finally accountability against the police in the city, and not against, but f uh, uh, on the police, 
and, and the cops used all of their force to try and stop it. They, uh, they ran uh, uh, two candidates, for example, in the last election. Uh, they lost on both counts. Mm -hmm. They didn't lose because they, 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 the police no longer had influence. They lost because uh, Viri and Alejandro and Carlos Garcia uh, could mount this, this incredible organization. To, so the to energy beat them. is there. Absolutely, the and, it's, and it's there nationally, yeah? nationally. No, no, not just here. Let, let, let's so, backtrack yeah. a little bit. There was, there was the moment that you went into politics at the yeah. state legislature. You right. were there for 14 years. That's right. What, what do you think were your um, most uh, successful achievements there in 14 it, years? It, 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 it's, it's hard to look back upon those years in, in the context of sitting here today and watching that clown show at the, at the, that, that the Republicans run out there. But in those days, I worked very closely with the Republican leader. I was a Democratic leader. We were very close. And we, we created what is now known as access. Uh, this state is running out of water. The last major attempt to, 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 to change water law in the state of Arizona, incredibly difficult fight, was, was, was Burton Barr and myself. Uh, we did that. And also, at the time, at the time that, that I was there, we had uh, uh, every every school district had its own local economics economy, and so it's it's obvious the, the poor districts were were absolutely screwed. We were we did the first major equalization of education in the state. It has since gotten got deteriorated because. This Republican legislature won't revisit it, but I, I can go on. Arizona State University. Well, you put hard for the Maricopa Community Colleges Indeed. to have, to have a, a college in South Phoenix. That's right. That's right. A, a, a college in South Phoenix, and 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 an assurance that the colleges were going to have the economic ability to 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 provide an education. Frankly, for our kids, right. I mean, for every kid, but 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 primarily this was for our kids, and and we did that. It was incredibly controversial, by the way. The whole idea of providing a tax base, we created a government, if you will, for community colleges. Right. The whole idea of doing that was unheard of nationally, nationally, and is now the largest or second largest community college system in the country. Almost forty percent of the students are Latinos. There was a moment in, during your time at the state legislature, the 14 years, when you had to be instrumental in electing a Latino governor. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. You must have felt proud for doing that, but how did you feel when he walked away? Well, we were, this is an interesting thing, you know, Raul was an incredible story. I mean, this is indigenous. Immigrant in Mexico, llegaron con nada. He went on to become a, 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 an attorney, a judge, an ambassador, and he ran for governor. And I was one of the people who were, was key in in in, uh, in seeking to elect him. We lost the first time. We won the second time. But Governor Castro did not have a temperament to be governor. He he. he he, he was a judge, he was an executive, he was uh, an authority, an authoritarian. He was used to giving orders, and you just don't do that in state government. You have to cajole and compromise and, and bring a, a disparate forces together. And, and so he, I think, very quickly realized that this was not for him. And as soon as he could, uh, and he arrived at an agreement with, with, with President Carter, uh, he left. Uh, so he, he was governor for less than two years. As we get close to the end here, Fredo, what is your recommendation or your words of encouragement for those wanting to get into politics, wanting to make changes in our community? ¿Qué le dices? To do it, to, to just move forward. Um, look, there's, a, there's some lines, a, a prose poem of, of James Baldwin that, that, are, that are important to recall. He, he, he wrote, 
the light always changes. The sea shall never cease to grind down rock. Generations will continue to be born. And we uh, are the only witnesses they have. And so that, that's really it. We have got to do something. Look, th things have changed dramatically in the time that we organized and went forward. And, and what I tell young organizers today is mostly you lose. We go out and we lose, and then we do it again and we lose, and then we do it again and then we lose, and then ultimately we win. But it takes so much effort. And then the next generation of kids now go to ASU and they know nothing about the kinds of sacrifices it took to open it up, to make it happen, to open all those doors. So, but it, it, it's, it's, if our compensation is not their thank you or their gratitude, our compensation is we are the only witnesses. Uh, we have, we owe the generation something. That those generations that are coming, and, and so we've we've got to keep uh, we've got to keep going. So what I'm hearing out there though is they're not recognizing the challenges and the sacrifices that people like you made in order to change our society, change the. Uh, the opportunities that, that, that are there. That's true for so many people. Obviously, for the young people who are organizing today, that's not the case. But that's true for so many people. But on the other hand, that, that's, that's, that's why change happens. It's, you know, it's, if you look at the, the Civil Rights Movement, there were 200 years after the Civil War where Jim Crow laws were everywhere. And finally, a group of people said enough. And, and those changes happened because people took the time to make it happen. The changes that have happened in the Latino community did not come about because <laughs> a bunch of you know, white folks decided one day, hey, let's treat Mexicans better. They came about because there was this constant battle and pressure for justice. That's, that's the obligation that all of us should have, but, but we, you, we, you have to recognize that most people want to go home at five and watch TV. Uh, you have to recognize that most people want security. Right. Most people don't want to take risks. The, the joke is, of course, amongst, because I went to jail very young and I went to jail often. <clears throat> uh, uh, you hang around with us, but you might end up in jail. <laughs> Now, let me be clear about that. You don't end up in jail because I robbed a, a liquor store. It, it was because we took on Joe Arpaio and he locked me up. It was because we were fighting for the right to organize farm workers and they locked me up. Um, we, we have an obligation to do those things. We have an obligation for our viewers now, Alfredo, to take a break. I want to thank you for taking the time to share your views and share uh, your wisdom with us about uh, the challenges that we faced in our community. So, okay. muchas gracias. Gracias a ustedes. Gracias a ustedes. Gracias. gracias. And thank you for this program, by the way. This is great. Te gusta. Me gusta. Me... Era tan necesario, tan necesario. I'm glad you like it, and it's our pleasure to bring to everyone Arizona Barrio stories. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. My name is Danny Ortega, and I work for the Ortega Law Firm. I've been a lawyer in this town for over 40 years. I practice primarily in the area of personal injury. You know, you've heard the commercials over to me by the lawyers who tell you that they do auto accident work. Well, I do a lot of work involving auto accidents, as well as medical malpractice. If you feel that a doctor, a hospital, or a medical provider has somehow not giving you the proper medical treatment and that has injured you or if you lost a loved one as a result of a malpractice we do that work too we also do cases like dog bites slip and falls things of that nature where you've been injured because of the negligence of another 
that is the kind of work that we do. Welcome back. This is Arizona Barrio Stories. I'm Jesus Hernandez. Our second guest on our program today is Frank Camacho. Frank, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Uh, 30 years, 30 or 30 more years in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. What do you see? What was it that inspired you to get into this broadcasting business? Because I wanted to be a baseball player. And I hurt my knee when I was a kid, so I couldn't, I was a catcher. So I figured I couldn't make it because my knee was all messed up. So I figured the best, next best thing would be to report on, on, on sports, games. on right. games. And um, I wanted to be the Mexican Vince Scully. I wanted okay. to do play by play. <laughs> And I figured uh, the best way to do it is to get a job at a radio station uh, and eventually doing whatever. And then eventually I'll get into sports. I'll be able to they'll see what a good play-by-play -play guy I am, how, how uh, knowledgeable of baseball I am. And hey, I'll get a job doing play-by-play -play for somebody and I'll be on my way to the major leagues. So you were on the air for 30 some years, uh -huh. but you're beginning was at South Mountain? Oh yeah, South Mountain High School. That was the best, I, I uh, when people, when I met people after I graduated and they said, well, what, what school did you go to, South Mountain? How did you survive? And I'd look at them like they were crazy. South Mountain at the time, uh, the best speech mm -hmm. teacher I ever had was at South Mountain. The best journalism teacher I ever had was at South Mountain. Um, the best uh, educator who challenged us to think was at South Mountain, George Spears. Um, I mean, I, I got a great education at South, South Mountain. Mountain. And um, I, it served me well. I, it, like I say, it, it did, I think for me, the best classes I could have had you got was the at South Mountain. You know, oh, yes. Oh, you yes. Know, you were, were at South Mountains, and uh, as the name of the program is, Arizona Barrio Stories. Mm -hmm. Did you come from a certain barrio? Yeah, 19th Avenue and Rosier is where I grew up. And um, what was it called? Uh, well, we didn't call it anything. We didn't call it like Chula Vista was over at 16th right. Street and Southern and all that. Um, we didn't have a name for it until later when uh, they started building houses on the other side of 19th Avenue. That whole area, uh, the cops started calling the kitchen because something was always cooking. Always cooking. Yeah, so <laughs> that was the area that, that I grew up in. Well, since you spend so much time in media, you need to have some views of what's taking place now, how it's grown, and the images that we have in the past, because pretty much, from my experience, we've been invisible mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Even now, with the, the numbers that are there, we're still sort of invisible on English market stations. Exactly. Okay. What's your exactly. Uh, it's It really hasn't changed that much. Uh, for some reason, news directors, and I think it's because of the nomadic nature of the business, where not only the reporters, but the news directors travel from city to city and uh, market to market. So there's, um, they don't have a lot of roots in any one place. So they don't really get to know the area as well as they should. And one of the things, as far as we're concerned, I think, is that we are so different. I mean, everybody thinks that because we have this, you know, Latino last name, we're all the same. Right. And as you well know, we're completely different than the Cubanos in Florida, the Tejanos in, in Texas, uh, even the New Mexicans. I mean, there's, there's differences. And um, so you can't just uh, put us in one neat little box. You've got to got to really get to know the community that you're in. And Phoenix is a, is a unique community. Um, just as I think if you would put Tucson and Phoenix right. against one another, you'd see that there are differences even within the state in the communities, it, especially in the mines I'm in. You know, it, it just seems like the news directors or those in decision positions don't understand our history, our traditions, or our Because culture. it's simpler just to say, oh, you got somebody named Hernandez. Okay, fine. He's as Latino, check out the box. But, but they don't know anything about the Hernandez, you know. Like, I know I, I've worked with, with Latinos who were born and raised in the Midwest. And they'd come out here and they'd see the Southwest Latino and it would be like, it's a whole new world to them. You know, and it's not their fault. I mean, they're, they're Latino, pero 
they don't understand what it's like to grow up in in, in the barrio, you know, in in in, in Phoenix and South Phoenix. They don't know the difference between like I'm a South Phoenix kid. That means south of the salt. Right. That don't mean the Marcos and Nisa, but you talk to some you know some of the news reporters and they'll say, oh, there's been a, a, a shooting, an incident in the South Phoenix uh, project of Marcos de Nisa. The Marcos is not South Phoenix. That's Central Phoenix. Words of encouragement for somebody who wants to get into this business now, Frank. Whew. Um, learn as much as you can. Just like uh, the best, the best uh, encouragement I got when I first started is when they ask you if you can do something, tell them yes. Even if you don't know how to do it, then go out and learn how to do it as quickly as you can. Because the most that you get to, to know, um, the less likely or the less time you'll spend out of a job. Because you will probably get fired if you get into this business. Somewhere along the line, you're going to fall victim to budget. You're going to fall victim to a sales of a, sta of a station. Uh, you're going to just, you're going to get fired. But those of us who know a whole lot, how to do a whole lot, that's why I'm, I know how to do news and I knew, I knew how to do sports. I figured, okay, I'm going to be valuable somehow. That's why I learned to anchor. So the more I knew, the less likely I would uh, get fired. Um, so that's what I would, number one. Number two, get your degree in something other than mass communication. You can learn this stuff you know, how to, how to write a story, how to interview people, you can learn that on the job. But if you have a skill that you can fall back on, then uh, you can sell it to the news director. You can say, I'm, I have a degree in business, let me be the business reporter. Um, and uh, again, if you try it, you may not like it. And if you don't like it, you've got something else to fall back on. If you got a mass comm degree, you know, you're stuck into mass comm. Uh, so it's better to be a little bit more diversified than that. And you're gonna have to learn how to, the internet, I mean, because they're asking reporters to do a whole lot more than what they asked us to do. Well, Frank, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know it's uh, short, but it's still uh, wonderful to hear your, your, about your story. Can I say one thing real Go quick? Ahead. Real quick. I'm todo pelón because I've just finished chemo. So that's a lot of people maybe are going to be shocked at my appearance. Pelon, Pablo, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you're, you're doing better. You're looking better. I'm trying. You're feeling better. Muchas gracias. That's our show. Arizona Barrio Stories is your window to the Latino experience. I'm Jesus Hernandez. Until next time, never be less than your dreams.